I work for a regional bank. We're based in Louisiana. And with the uh, COVID-19, when it first came out, I was asked to build a SharePoint site to house the information basically for associates. So, you know, what happens, um, you know, obviously we're a bank and people can't come into the bank anymore. So, and do people work from home? Do they go into the office? So first we started out beginning of March with this site and it was pretty basic, just some pretty graphics here. And then um, they asked for, these are the three original pages that they asked for. Um, and then we had a graphic that was very static and um, w just linked to the latest announcement. And so just kind of without, after a couple of weeks, I took that out because I had announcements set up um, using the news posts. And it was just, you know, every time I would add one, this uh, made it dynamic. And so you could see what the latest one was instead of just a graphic that you had to click on. So when I first got the requirements, it was pretty much create these three pages and add this little bit of text. There was nothing about navigation. So after the um, the first review of, okay, this has what they want, then I went back and added navigation, which turned out to be a big hit. <laughs> so this is pretty much almost all built without any code. There is one piece of code that I was inspired to find. Chris inspires me. And so this actually links to a podcast and we actually have had three different versions of that. So that was at the beginning of March. Then at the beginning of April, when the um, Paycheck Protection Program came out, we suddenly had all kinds of documents that we had to share with the bankers so that they could help clients process their loans, apply for and process the loans. And so that's where some of this SBA 7A CARES came in. And we built a couple of different pages and libraries. And so we built this library with all the forms and this is just a, a mock-up of it. So it's actually got six categories. But one thing that was really important, actually two, the two most important things probably, are um, this had to have an audience for either client facing or internal. At first, someone went in and put the, uh, at the end of each uh, file name, they put underscore internal, underscore client facing. And to me, that wasn't very clear and you certainly couldn't um, group or sort by it. So I went and created the audience and, um, and then we went back to just some regular file names. Now, the other thing that was very important was being able to open any of these files in uh, a separate window. So we would notice that we got it to where some like uh, Word and PowerPoint files and Excel would open up in a different windows, but the PDFs would not or vice versa. So we finally, um, I reached out to uh, someone who does write code because I don't. And we found this code and I will show you. This is the same library. And what we did is we went to format the name column. And all this does is basically right here, it tells it to use the URL plus the web equals one so that it will open up in a separate tab. And again, this was, took a couple hours for me to get that done because a couple of people were helping me with it, but we got it. And so now uh, they don't care that it shows up blue. <laughs> as long when they click on it, it will open up in a separate tab. So that was, like I said, one of the, those were the major things is having, like, being able to group by the um, audience. I actually have a sort order here that you obviously don't see the column because these files have to be in a certain order. So this piece of code right here is the only code in this entire site. And some of the cool features that we use is these are um, quick links. So this is one place where we're using quick links. There are like at least three different places where we're using quick links and they look very different, but it's all the same web part. But I think that showcases the flexibility of SharePoint Online. And so here's one and um, these actually, if you click on it, it would open up Outlook with an email with the, the title, uh, the subject already being whatever you see here. So program information eligibility. And it would it has the email address already. So we wanted to make sure that when someone sent an email, we knew because it's all actually going to the same email address. So we needed the subject to um, automatically 
apply. And then, and we have, this is another place where we're using quick links. So this right here, these are quick links. And these, some of them have really long file names. So I had to go in and I was able to upload the files, but then actually edit the title that we're using in the web part. So if I click on this one right now, this is the same, but I told him like, okay, there's a 110 character limit. So I had them um, come up with something that was short enough to fit in here. So that was something where they didn't have to change the actual file name. Uh, we were able to just change how it looks on here. And it was very important that these files all be internal use only, that we let them know for certain that this is internal use only. And I told them that I could definitely make that obvious. And so I used this uh, gray background for the section to kind of make everything stand out and then my big red letters here. And so this is um, just a text section up here and text at the bottom. Uh, making good use of the dividers is one of the newer web parts. And then on here, you don't see it, but there's actually a spacer here because I wanted to move this down a little bit. Okay. And so this was actually our first company-wide um, SharePoint online site. We are primarily SharePoint uh, 2016, but we wanted this to be able to be available to everyone uh, without crashing our SharePoint on-prem farm. And we thought that was a good way to roll everything out. There's no PII. And so there's uh, we don't have any security issues with this. So we used SharePoint for it. So this Encino support, this is a library, and the original request was for a page in SharePoint for online portal support. And I went back to him and then said, no, you're not getting a page called online portal support. What do you, you know, tell me what you really need. I need a more specific name as well. And so that library has three Excel documents in it, and those Excel documents get updated every couple of hours, every day, seven days a week. So I finally got tired of them emailing me the files and then I had to go delete the ones that were there and upload them. And plus on Sunday, they were mad that I was still sleeping at 9 a.m. Um, so what I did was I went in and I created this flow in Power Automate and it basically says, okay, when a new email arrives and I had them put a certain subject um, and just called it Encino reports. And that way um, it's looking for my, through my emails looking for Encino reports and it takes the gets the current files that are um, Excel files it deletes the ex current Excel files it's fortunate that there are only three Excel files in this library and um, and they all get replaced and then here I'm just adding the names of the files to uh, the new attachments so that at the end I can send them an email saying which files were uploaded. So basically it deletes the three that are there and then it here it uploads the new three. And so like I woke up this morning and oh look half an hour before I woke up the files were updated for today for the first round for today. So that's been nice uh, not having to watch my email from you know 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. or whatever the latest they've given me stuff. So this has been a real, really useful for me. And um, yesterday it, the, it did fail because one of the Excel files had gotten locked. And then I didn't have a chance to even look into it because I was working on something else. But eventually that file that was locked became unlocked. And um, in the afternoon when that flow ran, uh, it was able to delete the file that had previously been locked and everything is back to normal. This is another FAQ. So here originally we started out um, using the um, page anchors and I, I had a question at the top and you could click on it and it would jump down to the question with the answer. And then there were just too many. It was just a bunch of text. It was really hard to read. So then they decided they wanted to have just sections and just jump to the different sections. But again, just having text of the different um, section names at the top was still pretty ugly, not really, to me it wasn't very understandable, especially if you're new. 
and then near to SharePoint. So then I thought about how we're using quick links on another page and decided, hey, I can use the same kind of formatting where it fills the kind of a button and it fills the whole button. And so now I can click on um, loan booking and funding and it takes me down there. And then I put links to go back to the top. So I can click on top and it'll take me, right here it's only taking me almost to the top. This is the link that it's actually taking, supposed to taking me to. But in our actual production environment, it works just fine. It goes all the way to the top. So it's been pretty nice being able to just see what all the different sections are on the left, sort of a table of contents, and then being able to jump down and jump back up. And then tips for working remotely was just something that I had been seeing a lot on Twitter when people first started working from home. I saw a lot of tips from different places. So we actually sent out some best practices internally. And then um, on our production side, I have a lot more built out with tips from Herman Miller about you know working ergonomically. And um, I even put a video, a 15-minute meditation video from Adrienne, who does a, she has a big uh, yoga series on YouTube. So I just put some fun things out there to help people. And then um, also... A lot of people that are working from home are dealing with uh, having their children at home as well. So I went out and I found, mostly through Twitter again, some uh, resources. And these are actual individual link web parts. I actually had not used that before. So when I did use one, I was really surprised when I saw that it, it pulled in the picture and sort of the, the headline here and part of the description, there is an option to have the link itself above the, like where the picture is. I didn't find that to be all that useful, especially since the links are listed here. So I deleted that, but you can have it and I have it on something else that I can show you. So that is actually going to be on our, not that resource site, this one. So here it does have the direct links and so we, they wanted links to coronavirus as well as the flu and then I put links to who and the CDC main sites just if people wanted to go out there they would have you know instead of having to google it or memorize the URL they could just quickly go there so again that was one of our original pages that they requested they also really wanted to have these this video about hand washing and then this video about cover your coughs and sneezes. These came from YouTube. So I was like, great, we can use the YouTube web part. And they love that it just plays on the page. I found this on the CDC uh, website, this PDF file. So I just put it in here as a file viewer web part. And I really love that when you go to the file viewer web part, you can upload the document right there. You don't have to actually upload it to the document library first. And then something that was just unique to us was that financial institutions are critical or essential businesses. So we actually have a form, um, like if we got pulled over or something, we could say, hey, you know, I really am essential. And then I have uh, under tips for families, there's family activity times. And all of these images were I used the um, web search to find and people have been really loving the, uh, the images. I think that it adds a lot to the pages and kind of gets people interested more so than uh, just some text. And then a friend of mine created this isolation checklist for her kids. So I added that out here. So overall, this is just a SharePoint online out of the box, except for that one uh, col name column that we're using column formatting. And on uh, when the when the Paycheck Protection Program started, we had 17,432 visits to the site that day, in one day, and we only have about 3,800 employees. So that tells you how often people are going to this site because the resources are just so valuable. All this information is at their fingertips, and um, it's just been a huge hit internally. So now as we go forward, anything new that we can, we're putting into SharePoint Online, and that's been kind of our adoption driver. <laughs> Not that we officially rolled out SharePoint Online, but when we do, it's going to be like, oh, yeah, you remember how great this, you know, coronavirus site was? Well, this is just going to be the same. 
that's really cool, Teresa. Really, really cool. And I have to also say, I really love the URL of your tenant. <laughs> so, but, but yeah, so really, really cool stuff. This is really nice to see, and and it's it's great demos on showing other companies and people what you can build with modern SharePoint and modern and and more different kind of modern uh, SharePoint portals because portals is a big thing, personally. Mm -hmm. And and like you said, um, even though you your company hasn't truly adapted the cloud, and this will definitely help on then gradually transition them because I, I'm pretty sure that they start asking on, hey, what about in my team side, can I start using these kind of things and capabilities and all of that? And, and then that drives adaption of cloud as well. Yeah, and we just rolled out Microsoft Teams. I say rolled out, we, we gave it to them and haven't done anything other than one very brief email that says, hey, you have Teams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, so we're starting to use that as well. Absolutely, absolutely. But like, like said, uh, and also like Kim noted actually on the chat uh, when we were when you were presenting that uh, re uh, that this is really nice to see what other people are using, um, and we absolutely welcome welcome these kind of demos as well because this is super useful for everybody to understand what's possible. Also, the I, I like the power automate part. Um, you probably shouldn't even tell your manager that you're automating your tasks, so then you have thirty minutes free time. So super busy and uh, doing all of this stuff. But yeah. okay, anyway. Thank you, Teresa, on this one.